Hey pals, welcome back to a new video. Today, we're going to be taking part two of our uh, eight directional walking animation. In the previous video, we started with drawing uh, mock-ups of each uh, kind of like idle pose in the five different variations of our eight directional walking animation. And then we animated like a pitched up version of a side-scrolling walk to serve as our basis. Now we're going to take that animation and see how many variations we can do in one video. I hope we can get all five, but uh, let's get into it and uh, have a look, shall we? So with this video, what I'm going to do is start with this animation. I'm going to flatten it and I'm going to see if we can try to get all of the same beats across each of the other animations. So what I'll do is I'll make it so that only the layers that I want to keep are visible. So I turn off the visibility of all the other layers and then right click and click flatten visible. What this does is it, it compresses everything to one layer. Now this, these frames here are the entire animation. So I'll copy them. I'll go to like a random new document and then just paste them and then undo. So now I have all of my layers back and then I'll go back to my other document, copy all of these frames and paste them on top of everything else. So now we should be able to hide everything and we can still see this animation and it's just sitting on this one layer. Now I'll take this and I'll make it like much, much more transparent and I'll just put it, let's say here, we'll bring everything back except for the silhouette because I don't need that just right now. So we can take, we can take our walking animation and we should be able to expand now each of the other ones that we want. You can press Alt N to duplicate the frames out. So I'll show you again, Alt N, 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 N. Now we have six and I can take these frames that we copied. We'll call this flat animation, copy them, paste them. It might be a little easier to bring this out to the side, just somewhere away so that it can behave more as a reference. You can see both at the same time and we can, uh, we can start effectively moving everything around. So we should still have each of these separated because we drew them separate before we animated in the previous episode. So now we have a guide for how these should be manipulated to match the walking animation that we've already established. So from here we can start. So let's just watch the head first. We've got the head going down, up, up, down, up, up. One, two, three, four, five, six. So let's see if we can track it. Okay, so that's the same. Similar things with the body. So up, down. Let's do the legs next. We've got the right leg sort of coming forward on this first frame. And then we can just draw something that kind of looks like that's what we're trying to do. And then next frame, it's all the way forward. So we'd see it kind of like out there somewhere, if at all. Then it's flatter, just sort of planting itself. And then it comes back a little bit. And then it's way back. Uh, in fact, we need this off the ground, sort of more like that, huh? And then we can bring this a little more in, maybe not so much. And this comes forward like we had it. Okay. So now we have the red feet in sync. Anatomically, like this isn't perfect, but at least we have some idea of the motion. And we're going to do the same thing now with the blue leg. We're going to pull this back, back again. It doesn't really matter what frame we start on. It just matters that we are getting the frames the same. And because there's depth, we aren't going quite as far out, right? Because the, the actual line that we're following is this line, right? That's flat. So the blue should be following that line. And if you want, you can even put that line in here, right? So the actual, the feet from neutral are going something like this. Kind of like that. So you could probably just take this and drag all of the empty frames, right click on the frame with the lines and click link cells. Now these will be joined and you'll be able to see them across 
So that will kind of give you a bit of a baseline to understand like where we're actually walking around. So now we're all the way in front. And again, try not to be too conservative. Try to be a little more dramatic if you can, because that'll help actually show what we're trying to show here. Okay, coming back a little. Okay. There we go. We've actually got some movement now. And that's already looking way, way better than the first one did when we started it. So as you can see, the, the consecutive animations are not that much more complicated. And I think I want to see a bit more swing in the hips. I think that's the only thing that we're missing here. So like this can come forward a little and get some distance between these legs. Yeah, that's looking all right. And I think this frame could be maybe a little further forward. And same thing here, we could push just a little further forward. I spend a lot of time when I'm working like this, kind of like visualizing in my mind. But having guides like this, especially if you're kind of on the beginner side, I think is a really, really good idea. And trying to come up with little ways that you can do that, make it a little easier for you to visualize and understand what you're doing, I think that's probably one of the best things you can do. Okay, so I just wanna make sure that here, like where kind of the line that we should be on is a little further forward still. And you can see the perspective is quite difficult, but we wanna be following this line in an even way. So, you know, it's not gonna be perfect, but that's pretty good there. Maybe we can even cover this up. So I'm pretty happy with the beat. I'm just not that happy with the, with the proportions. The perspective's just a little confusing to me. Kind of looks like he's still looking this way. Maybe we can't get too crazy with it. I really want to show the toes, but I, I fear that they are confusing a little bit. The scale. I'm hoping the arms make it a little more clear, but we can just keep chipping away at it from different angles until it feels like what we want. So let's go for the red arm now. And we're looking at this. So forward a little bit, we can bring it back for now to get the perspective right. It's coming back now. And then all the way back facing us. And then a little bit further, back the other direction. Good, good. And then this way we're back a little more. Okay, that's looking really good. One, two, uh, maybe this frame could be a little shorter. And this frame as well. And then this frame we could make a little longer. Okay, let's try the blue. Again, just getting it, just trying to get it to a point where we can actually appreciate what we're looking at. I think we're gonna erase it, this blue arm for like all of this. Let's keep our actual character here in reference. Just make sure that we're not losing size. And I think what we're seeing here is that the, the arms are a lot wider in the reference. So I'll just make that adjustment, grab all of the ones that I want to move and just move them wholesale. Same thing with these ones, just take them out and then just repeat the process. And I'm not, I'm not convinced we'd see all of this shoulder, but yeah, that does look so weird to me. I'm not into it personally. We can, we can come back to how we think we would render the shoulder pads for the character a little bit later, but I wouldn't personally be too comfortable drawing the entire arm on the other side. Even here, I, I would say it's uh, 
I'm not 100% on board with it. I just want to also make sure we've got the length of the proportions correct. So here, that's, this is quite short, that's fine. Make sure that we link all of our silhouette frames so we can take this now out and we can now look at it across the whole thing. So yeah, I mean, I could see how we might want to make, make this a little longer, but in motion, it's a little different. Cool. And I think this red leg, now that I'm looking at it all, I think it's too, uh, too far to the left. Immediately better. So all I'm doing as, as I'm doing this whole process, whatever, whatever I'm not saying out loud, uh, whenever I'm doing that, what I'm basically doing is trying to just review this and then review this and then in motion, see if it feels right. So does it feel like we're walking as we come back here? Are the feet planted? Does it feel like it's carrying the weight of the animation? And then when we lift off, does that naturally feel like it's swinging forward? Is it being caught? And then the same thing. That's looking really good. That's looking very consistent. Now we've got east and we've got northeast. We can try doing the same thing for north. So now for north, I've gone and just created an idle frame facing away just so that I have a better understanding of the proportions. Um, and I'm just gonna make my blobs match that so that I have a just a clearer idea about what I'm going for here. Longer arms, I guess. Okay, let's say we're working with that. So that's this, that's this. We can now make one, two, three, four, five extra frames. So now we have north facing. And I wanna take our flattened, uh, our flattened animation and import that as well. So copy paste across there. And now we can actually watch that as well. And we're good to go. Now. This we might not really need the guides for. I mean, the guides are essentially that we're going to be, you know, going straight. That's all that matters. So as long as the, the feet stay on the flat, you should be fine, but you can tell anyway. <laughs> so uh, we've got red foot coming forward. It's basically just that the vertical um, component, right? So when this is uh, fully extended forward like that, this should be all the way up here. Okay, and then it'll start kind of revealing itself back again. So same with the blue leg. And I just kind of want to make sure that we're in the same kind of ballpark for that extension. So there is the most extended, which will put us like there. And then Red goes to here, blue goes to there. Okay. Let's get the head bob in there. So let's take this whole thing and move it up. One, and then we'll follow the beat from here. So one, two, one, up. One, two, one, up. And then same with the body. Okay, I think that, that adds a lot. So before you start critiquing the legs, I think it's it's good to have the body doing what it needs to do first, just because it's such a it's such a like fundamental component of how you look at the motion and how you appreciate it. And I think I want to keep this pretty straight, even though the characters got uh, just a bit of separation in their in their thighs. I still think it should be mostly forward. So I'm just trying to think about not losing this too much, but also making it look natural. So before we had the, the legs coming out sort of this way, and I wasn't really happy with that. So like this frame, I'll keep this in. That's looking better already. Okay, time for the arms. facing the camera this time. So 
So we're just trying to make them match with this, right? Same timing. So up, forward, forward, back, back, back. This frame could probably come up a little higher to show that it's further away. Oh, that's looking really good. Even this little swing as it comes back around. I love that. Maybe we can have that come across in the animation as well. Maybe we could go a little bit further over. And in fact, this is symmetrical. So you could, you could hypothetically take the red side, copy it, go to the blue side, paste it, edit, flip it horizontally, and then uh, shift R, replace the color. So we're going from this to this, and then again from this to this, and then do the magic trick with the offset. So take all of the frames, push them half forward, take the back half, pull them back. And there you've you've done the arms. So a little, a little tricky, but because it's symmetrical, you can just copy and flip it. You can just mirror them. Now, somehow we've got them backwards. Let's do that again. Let's take all of them and offset them by half. Oh, that's right. I just offset the wrong ones. Well, silly me. Not bad. I think we could go a little more dramatic with the shortening here. I know it looks ridiculous, but it doesn't look that ridiculous when you zoom out. And I, I think across all of these frames with the body, I do want to see a little bit more of this top half, this top bit. I think it's not very representative of how much we'd actually see. Or maybe it is representative and the head's just a bit too high. Maybe we can bring the head down a little. Yes, kind of. I mean, we should still be able to see the, like the nape of the neck, right? We should be able to see like this. If we can see that of the shoulders, then I would imagine we would see that of the head. So I'm gonna use the shade brush to just do this manually. I'm gonna go grab these two colors, go shading, make sure once you select them, they'll show up here. And then I'll just press um, X to flip it. And then I'll just draw across so that it's in line with the shoulders. So just regarding shading, if we want, we can use the shade brush again. And then think about the frames where if we look here, Think about the frames where this part of the leg is facing the sun. The underside of the thigh here would be darker. And if this is the underside of the thigh, you would darken all of this to show that, right? Because the sun, well, it's, it's in front of us or above us, right? So this is kind of all dark. And what that does is it makes this lighter, right? It means that, oh yeah, this, this line here, the calf, the sunlight is hitting it, right? It's hitting this part and it's not hitting underneath this part. So you can use that as a distinction to show, oh yeah, like this is all dark because it's not being hit by the sun at all. And then as we bring it back, still not. Now we can kind of start to see it again. See here, it kind of like gives you that impression of depth. Like the body is casting a shadow down underneath the legs. And so this then must mean it's, the, it's behind the body at this frame because it's not under the shadow of the, of the body. But now this is under the shadow and now most of it's under, well, the first half is under the shadow. And now all of it's under the shadow. You know, we could probably, well, even here, it's all still under it. So take the same principle and you can do it on both legs if you want. Just to give you that better sense of depth. You could even do it with the arms, but for now, I'll leave this here and we can come back to this in a later stage. But just a note that I thought I would share with you on, you know, as you're working with this, you're going to be asking yourself the question, like, is this good enough to move on or should I keep working on it? And to an extent, at different points in the process, you move on at different intervals. So like, you know, you kind of don't want to detail anything too far if there are other things that might change how it, how it looks. So in this case, 
you know, it, we could be sitting here if this was all flat like it was. We could be sitting here all day trying to juggle around and wiggle and wobble, you know, where the pixels should and shouldn't be. But if the remaining depth is actually going to be decided by the color as opposed to the position of the pixels, then trying to perceive or show the depth with the surface area isn't really going to help. So you could just get caught in a loop trying to fix a problem that can't be fixed with the tool that you're using. So you kind of have to learn to be a little more comfortable with just moving on sometimes, but it's about understanding when, when to move on, like where that point is. And some of that can be, you know, experimental. Sometimes you go further and then you go, oh, actually, I don't like that. And you undo or you come back and redo something. Your goal is to minimize that stuff, but you know, to an extent, you kind of have to play around to know where the lines are, where the bounds are. So we've got east, we've got northeast, and we've got north. The only one that we're missing, or two that we're missing, is southeast and south. So let's take southeast now and do that one. I'm going to take my animation frames. I'm going to, I'm pretty happy with this. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five with Alt N, and then take all of my animation frames, copy, paste. So now I have this, and then I'm gonna take my reference. I'm going to link the reference, make sure I've got that linked on the first frame. Drag this over so that I can actually see it, and we're ready to go. Okay, so this, I think the lines would be helpful. So let's just take those same lines and draw them here. So I think we're gonna go from, how do we go with Northeast? We went like one, two, three pixels in something like that so like one two three i think the line should be like here and then the next one's line is going to be like here same thing let's go back to the rising and falling first i think that was the most helpful so let's have a look to see how we did it with northeast the highest point was up here i think before we drop and i think it's the same point yeah actually it's the same okay so now we can just make the body match so down up down up okay really good and we may you know we may be moving these around a little bit just before we go to the next phase so after we get all of these done there may be a little bit of correction that we want to do i mean theoretically we want the head to be in the same spot every time so here like the fact that the head is a pixel higher means that we probably do want to bring the head across this down and then across all of this down so that it's the same exact positioning of the head in every single animation. So it's, it doesn't make a huge difference right now, but just something to keep in mind. Okay, and then I'll, I guess I'll bring the body down as well. And you know what? I'm gonna try it with the arms as well, just to, just to see if it does anything. So let's move the arms, one, two, one, one, two, one. And then, okay, now in front, let's start with that. So this comes all the way this way and shifts probably forward, maybe even two frames. Mm, maybe let's go with one. Okay, and then we're still in front, still a pixel forward. And again, I'm just kind of visualizing this with my, my brain. beats are there but I think we're not really getting the sense of depth very well I think this should stay like far the, the further out this way it goes it kind of looks like we're swinging it maybe we can bring this erase this on the way out and then shorten that and then start to elongate it again. Yeah, this frame, I think we want to sort of go as drastic as we can so that we can really see that there's a difference. I'm just playing with it so that I can, you know, evaluate something. Fine for now, I'll move on. Just to, again, we want to compare before we get to granular. 
So get this away on this frame, still not there on this frame, maybe not even the shoulder. Now we start to see it, but maybe not quite much yet. Okay, and then we start seeing it swing forward. And then we sort of come back a little bit and then gone. And I think again, we could probably go a little more drastic. This arm, I think it's probably a little too short. So I'm just gonna give it one extra pixel on like every frame. Well, at least on the back frames. Let's bring it back to here. This would be the frame, right? So the arm should go even further down. And this one, we should be able to see the shoulder. Because remember, remember our two, two step rule. This one goes all the way up here. So this shoulder needs to align with this shoulder there, which means we should see some of it up here. I think so. I think that is better. Nice to keep the reference around. Okay, legs time. So, uh, all the way in front. We're going all the way to like here, I think. And we're gonna run along this white line. You know, I think, I think my line, my white line is probably a little too far over. Looking at this frame here, the white line has to pass through. Was that where it was? Yeah, not quite. So I'm just going to redo this. Just there. That's better. I think this back frame could be like way further back. And this is much further forward. And maybe a little more even here. Uh, maybe not quite so much. <laughs> okay, right leg. Let's go. Basically not going to see it on any of those back frames. This frame could bring the knee a little far further forward. Yeah, I want to see more of the more of the leg here. And I don't love how flat this looks. I mean, it, it could be one of two things that we can fix. We can either bring the toes back like that. That'll straighten the knee out a little bit. I guess that's the way we'll do it. And then we have to bring this back again as well. So if we bring this out of the way again, just inspect it. How do we feel about it? It's not bad. I'd like to see the leg, the right leg, uh, like the foot touching the ground on the way through. And maybe even, man, this crossover frame is not very kind to us, but. On this frame, maybe flatter on the ground. And then I kind of don't need that. And now looking at the arms, now I can see a little bit more potential to go further. So from back here, that's fine. That's okay. Could be a little further forward. Yeah. Now it doesn't have to go quite as far at the end, but I still want to see more motion around here. So let's just make it so that it's a bit not so bent the wrong way. And then, hmm. Let's, let's go a little further. That was my motto. Perspective is a hell of a drug. But that's why we have our references. This frame here, I want to see a bit more of an angle. So, you know, the, the shoulder should not go much more than that. So that's better. And then even here, I could probably conceive this going that way. Yeah, cool. Okay, so we're almost done with our base animations. I mean, it's five different walking animations. I think they're pretty good so far. I think we can really see them 
rotating and it really feels like we're pretty much there. So, same again. Now there'll be time to update any of what we don't like about this once we go to the detail phase for each of these frames. But for, for now, uh, as long as we're happy with this, you know, the shoulders are roughly where they need to be. The anatomy is quite right. Like, I'm animating these without any clothes. I'm not animating the hair. You can see how, you know, if we would apply the same process, we would eventually get to those details. But just for the sake of the tutorial, I'm keeping it quite abstract in the animation phase. So let's now duplicate one, two, three, four, five, and let's keep this stuff flat link those cells. Let's just make sure we copy and paste the animation frames for reference and we can watch that play out. So now we're going to do the same thing once again, bring this out to the side so we can see it and then make the head do our motion. So one, two, one, leave it. One, two, one, leave it. Same thing with the body. One, two, one, leave it. One, two, one, leave it. I do think, I do think we'll move all of these towards the end. I have a feeling, I have a feeling this is too low. Coming towards the camera, that means that when we step, like when the blue leg steps forward, it's going to come right to the edge here. And I want to see this pretty much be like this. So this idle pose, where the feet are planted when someone is standing still, usually the feet are going to be a little further apart than when you walk. When a lot of people walk, their feet come closer together because when you're walking, that foot has to carry the balance for your whole body, left side and right side, right? The one foot. So if it's too far out to the side, let's say your right leg is like all the way out to the right, well, you're going to tip over now as the left. So when you walk, your feet come a little closer on this axis, they come a little closer to the center of your body. Uh, and that's why they're not as far apart as here. Like way back, we might not even see the leg in this frame. And then it's starting to come forward. Better, much better. So I want to do the same trick that we did before by copying and pasting. I'm going to take the whole leg, copy the leg to the back, flip it, edit, flip horizontal. And then paint the back leg to this one. And then offset it by half. So I'm going to take like these frames, put them all the way somewhere else. Bring these ones to the front. Take these ones and bring them all the way back to where the front ones were. Okay, time saver. And I think actually we're like a pixel off. I think it's not quite symmetrical. So I'm just going to like shift this one over. Yeah, I prefer it that way. And then just adjust the body to show that leg a little more. Okay, arms now. All the way to the back. Starting to come back forward. Cool. And then if you want to do the copy paste trick, we can do that here as well. So copy paste, edit, flip horizontal, take the front half, put them in back, back half, put them in front, and then recolor. And again, I, I think we could probably bring it one pixel in. And also, the because this is in front of the body, I think I just need to erase. So like on these frames, when it's like way back, I just want to show the rest of the body. There's a couple of things here, maybe like this frame. We could bring this a little bit further up. Here as well, so it's more gradual. Like I want to see this black line go down, down, disappear, and then come back. Feels more progressive that way. Like there's more depth. And I don't like to see this very much. Yeah, on the way back. Nice. Okay. 
Ladies and gentlemen, if we take away the tags for a second so that we can just watch it, I wonder if we can make it walk in a circle. So we need to take like this, uh, this, 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 and then reverse, not reverse the frames, reverse the order in which they appear. Oh God, my brain, I can do this. And then flip all of these. Huh, okay. Nice, eight directions. We did it. <laughs> so I think the legs are the legs are keeping pretty faithful. I'm actually really comfortable with the way the legs transition. The shoulder, the front shoulder, I'm not a hundred percent happy with. Like there was a bit of a jitter somewhere. I think it was here. This frame here, I don't love. So let's just back up before we had all our fun. I think it was maybe like. It's either like this frame or this frame. One of the frames here, it doesn't it doesn't transition very well. Uh, yeah, I guess it's this. So I guess this shoulder should probably be further back. And this one could be like further forward and down. Yeah, much better. Okay. Pals, thank you so much for watching. I think this is a really good place if you are confident with your pixel art character skills and you know what your character looks like, this is a fine place for you to drop off. We've got all the animations that we need, we've done the five, we can mirror them for the other three as you've seen, and um, from here on it's basically just a matter of um, filling in the details for each of them. If you've watched any of my other animation tutorials, you'll know from here what I do is I tint with a find and replace color, all of the colors back to their proper colors. So I won't do the color coding. And then I will add any uh, extraneous animation details. So in this case, the ponytail, I would do across all of the frames. And then I would start detailing them. With these animations, you can see a lot of, a lot of the pixels are common between the frames. So I would be totally okay with copying and pasting details like the the chest, this piece here, could probably be, at least to start, copy, pasted, and then fitted over this red shape, and then just modified where you wanted. That's what I would consider doing to start. So I would do that either in a new file or in a new layer above these layers. I wouldn't really destroy these layers, just because it's kind of, you never know what you're gonna do with them. So that's what I would do. Thanks for watching. This has been Eight Directional Walking Animations, part two. Um, I may do another video where we actually like implement this in Unity. Like now that I've got these, it's very easy to uh, to just throw them on a character controller and pilot that around. So if you're interested in seeing that video, mention it in the comments and I'll, I'll show you how to do that. Till next time. Hey pal, thanks for watching. And thanks most especially to the patrons and Twitch subs who support this channel and my game dev project Insignia. To find out more, click the links in the description below. And uh, if you like this video, tell YouTube by clicking the like button, and then YouTube will tell me, and then I'll make more videos. That's nice. Thanks again, and uh, until next time.